99 out of 100 listeners think we ring the bell. They think our music's great, it's always up to date. With the weather and the news, they say we're really swell. 99 out of 100 listeners think we're doing fine. We're pleased and very proud, and we're saying it out loud in the hope that you are one of the 99. Yeah, yeah. We hope that you are one of the 99. We have 10 radio stations under one roof, and their broadcast studios share the same hallways. Mike uh, Glickenhaus, isn't it true that all the Clear Channel stations are programmed from out of town? Harry, that's simply not true. Each city has a different sensibility, so our local managers program our local stations based on what the local listeners Number want to one. hear. 10 radio stations under one roof, doesn't that stifle competition? Scott Shotfield, hello. No question, Harry. Whenever you have Who competitors sharing guy? the same lunchroom and restrooms and mailroom and supervisors, how can you have competition? I say you can't. And all that does is create a radio dial full of boring, bleached out, homogenous. Harry's clothes. going down again. How can that possibly serve the audience? For someone who's never worked in our building, you've certainly formed some pretty strong opinions about our competitive environment. You just can't have competition with everybody under the same roof, that's all. Harry's out. Believe me, we have some spirited rivalries in our building. That's Poppycock and Falderall. Your so-called Poppycock and Falderall? What? Even on-air guests. I know for a fact that last week Bruce Jenner was in your studios hopping from station to station with the same spiel for some facial cleanser. Then our audience was well served, so what? Do you have any brothers or sisters, Mikey? Actually, Scott, I'm an only child. Then what the heck would you know about sibling rivalry? I was merely creating an example. What is he doing? <laughs> Jen, Jen, stand by with the wake-up stick. This guy is whack. Oh, Harry, this is getting ridiculous. You're the one with the ridiculous on it. Hey, hey, nice tie, Mikey. This has gone on long enough. Jen, tap Harry, please. Thank you. Wow, great stuff, guys. Uh, we'll take your phone calls for Clear Channel's Mike Glickenhaus and media watchdog Scott Shatfield. So don't go away. We'll be back at 2 and 2. No flipping. We're clear. Was I pissy enough? They, they wanted me to be pissy. Scott, you were really great. Uh, you want to grab some dinner? Yeah, if you take off that stupid tie. Boy, am I getting tired of this.
we are all ever flowing, only knowing we heed the call. Everyone's falling, all of y'all have helped me to stand. From my friends at the potato to my friends in Japan. I wanna eat life, I wanna taste all of us. Eat life, body stronger from all of us. <laughs> it's 101 KGB with Dave Shelley and Chainsaw Butch. You're on the air with Bob Costas. Probably one of the funniest moments ever heard on KGB is to hear the great sportscaster Bob Costas say, I am the king of Bushville. <laughs> That's what he wanted to name his book a couple of years ago. But you know what? I actually I buried the headline from my appearance here. This actually occurred about a month ago. A friend of mine who worked for the Spirits of St. Louis turned 50, and I had to come up with an appropriate gift for him. Uh, and so I called one of those um, online companies that sells the, uh, the sports memorabilia, and I got an authentic Spirits jersey. And it turns out that the company is based here in San Diego. The very nice woman answers the phone, and she takes my order, and I give her my name, and she says, are you the Bob Costas from NBC? And I said, yes. And she said, we love you here in San Diego. And yes. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, <laughs> thanks very much. I'm thinking, Padres, you know, I, I hosted Tony Gwynn's <laughs> yeah. retirement ceremony yeah. or maybe the Chargers or something. I, what, what is it? She says, no, here in San Diego, we know that you are the king of doucheville. <laughs> <laughs> I never felt so proud in my entire life. This sweet lady on the phone. Disem hey, Andy, turn on KGB. It's Randy, Dick, Randy. We've been working together for nine years. Whatever. How come they got Bob Costa and we didn't? Well, first of all, it's Costas. And they've known him a long time. I don't care if he's Dave's mommy. Your job is to intercept those big names and get them onto our show exclusively. Dickie, let's just go down and grab Bob Costas right now. Oh, yeah. We're going to do that, Diva. No doubt about it. I hope this doesn't happen next week with Richard Simmons. Does the queen come back yet from... Sorry. I think we'll have Richard all to ourselves. So this is the guy from Monday Night Football, right? No, Dickie, that's Al Michaels. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Jen? It's Jill. Whatever. We're in a spot break. We need Bob Costa in one minute, capiche? It's Costas, Dick, and he's got to be out of here in one minute or so. He's got to head over to a rotary breakfast. Oh, yeah, right. And I'm head moose at the Elks Lodge. Look, if I find out you're BSing me on this, Jen, there's going to be heck to pay, young lady. <laughs> hey, Bob, you want to hang out for one more segment with us? I've got all morning. Okay, so next Tuesday, Billie Jean King's going to be on to promote Battle of the Sexes 2 with Anna Kornikova. Okay. Can I get a bio on Ms. King? Sure, I'll get it off the internet. Oh, no need. We can look her up right here in the World Book Encyclopedia. Dave, did you happen to return the JK volume that you borrowed last week when you looked up Helen Keller? Yes, I did. I think you took it home. <laughs> Dude, the article was like one paragraph. I didn't even take it out of the office. Uh, one page and uh, two photographs, as I recall it. Yeah. I don't have your book, Cookie. You know, why don't I just get something off the Internet? Dave, let me explain something to you. The World Book Encyclopedia is the greatest assemblage of data in the history of mankind. And the JK volume is the MVP of encyclopedias. We're talking about Jefferson, Johnson, Kennedy, uh, Martin Luther King, Khrushchev, Koufax, Jesus Christ! Oh, the Lord's name in vain. That's nice, Chainsaw. No, Jesus Christ is in the uh, JK volume. Uh, six pages and uh, 22 photographs, as I recall it. Photographs of Christ. Who would have taken those, Annie Leibovitz? <laughs> Illustrations, whatever. Just bring back the damn book. Okay, so anyway, I've got a couple of guests I still need to confirm for tomorrow. Bill Walton and Mark Harmon. Okay, that's cool. What are they up to? Well, Bill Walton's got this new basketball shoe he's promoting. It's called Grateful Keds. And then I think his kids, his sons play basketball or something. <laughs> Luke plays for the Lakers. And Chris plays for the Aztecs. Yeah. All right, what about Mark Harmon? Okay, so Mark has, he's got that CBS show, Naval Criminal Investigations, NCIS. He's been on St. Elsewhere, Chicago Hope, West Wing, movies like Freaky Friday, Wyatt Earp, Summer School, Presidio, Stealing Home. 
didn't he play like Dillinger and Ted Bundy or something like that? Yeah, that's his forte. Next up are John Wilkes Booth and Genghis Khan. <laughs> Khan. Khan. I could look that up, but some kleptomaniac walked off with the information. Hello? Hello, Cheney? Hey, Jill, what's up? Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to call Dave. Oh, that's all right. Oh, sorry. Hey, listen, when you speak with him, could you remind him to bring in my JK Encyclopedia tomorrow, please? Okay. I'd call him myself, but I'm kind of preoccupied right now. <laughs> preoccupied, Chainsaw, where are you? I'm down here at Humphreys, by the bay. Yeah. <laughs> Humphreys, what are you doing, going to a show tonight? Looking for lost books, or what? Well, Concert manager Bobby Brisky thought with my relationship, show business contacts, etc., the big stars that come through would feel more at home if they had somebody who'd make them comfortable. Kind of a liaison thing. Like a host. Yeah, exactly. In fact, uh, the Don Rickles people want me to meet with Don <laughs> in about five minutes. Really? And why is that? Pointers on ad libbing, put downs, I'm not really sure. <laughs> right. Hey, listen, can I put you on hold a second? I gotta call Dave. Sure. Fine. Wow. <laughs> wow. Hello? Hey, Dave. It's Jill. Did I catch you at a good time? Oh, this is fine, Jill. I was just making some brats and getting ready to watch the baseball game. Why? What's going on? Oh, uh, Shell and I are just heading out to get some dinner, but I wanted to let you know that I have bumped Bill Walton and Mark Harmon to next week. <laughs> and that we've got Davy Jones from the Monkees on tomorrow. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. Is there anything else? Yeah, Chainsaw wants you to bring in his JK Encyclopedia. Oh, God. Not this again, please. <laughs> Here he is on the other line. No, no, Jill, no, don't. Shell, come here, you gotta hear this. What is this? Oh, it's Dave in the bathtub again? Yeah, yeah, you can practically oh. smell the lavender. Okay, hang on. Okay, good. Hello, Jill? No chainsaw, it's Dave. Dave, I'm glad I caught you. Wanted to remind you to bring in the JK Encyclopedia tomorrow. Chainsaw, I don't have your book. For all I know, Dick and Diva use it as a doorstop. Or maybe coyotes ate it. Or, or maybe they give it to the dingoes. Or the jackals, or the kangaroos. Oh, the jackals and kangaroos. Hmm. Be nice to look up those animals, if I could. Chainsaw, you really need to take ownership of your issues and give yourself permission to release them into the universe before your essence is completely out of harmony, okay? Peace be with you! What is it? Hey, Don, how are you? Oh, here, take the towels. Huh? What? Here, here's five dollars for yourself. Go to summer camp and get out of my life. What is this, a gag already? <laughs> Say, Don, what before do we get started, I got a question. The classic story where you and a date were having dinner. Frank Sinatra was across the room at a big table. You asked Frank to come over and say hello to impress your date. And when he did, you get up and say, Frank, can't you see I'm with somebody? <laughs> it's, it's classic. My question is, did it work? No, I mean, did it impress the date for later? You're getting on my nerves that I don't like it. Leave Frank out of this. Okay, thanks. Oh, look at this. I haven't seen this album for years. I thought that was a brand new album. You have not aged a day. I knew I liked you, <laughs> Shelley. Davy Jones is our guest here at the KGB this morning. A household name, obviously, became huge in the 60s when the monkeys broke out. But that changed the course of history for another big rock star, didn't it? That's right, and a young mod named David Jones decided to change his name to... Uh, the drum roll, Chris, come on. <laughs> David Bowie. And 
He was never heard from again. That's right. <laughs> and after the monkeys, school children forgot all about Davy Jones's locker. You know, the sailing legend. But if you looked up Davy Jones in the encyclopedia, it's still the original Davy Jones. And I get nothing. You could look it up. Look, do you have a world book here? What? What? what the, did, did I say something wrong? Oh, no. No, no. no not at all. Not at all. Mm. Gee, I, I didn't think it was that bad of a story. <laughs> Careful in there. Don't go in there. Mason's working the glory hole. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Dave-o, what's happening? Burger. How's everything in programming? Great, yeah. Um, did you get the memo about tonight's softball game between you guys and the oh. Dick and Diva show on Zoo 96? I got the memo and that's why I've been promoting it all morning long, okay? Yeah, if you could just go forth and promote that a little bit more. That would be super, okay? What do you mean that would be great? Hmm? The line. The line is, that would be great. Not super. Hmm. Oh, and about Chainsaw's JK Encyclopedia that you borrowed? Look, I didn't take Chainsaw's JK Encyclopedia. Okay. Everyone needs to understand that. Yeah, I'm just going to have to go forth and disagree with you there. So if you could just go forth and bring it back on in tomorrow, that would be super, okay? Douchebag. So call the window factory today and arrange for a free quote on the new burglar-resistant house armor windows so strong they can withstand the impact of a nine-pound bowling ball without shattering the glass. Call today, 1-800-WINDOW-1. Oh, yeah. I heard all about these spree of bowling ball burglars lugging around nine-pound Brunswick's just smashing willy-nilly into people's houses. <laughs> Do they own their own burglar bowling shoes or rent them? That's just an example of how strong the glass really is. And you can't make a clean getaway with a name stitched on your bowling shirt unless no. you run down an alley, of course. Now, have you ever actually seen a bowler run? No. No. <laughs> now, speaking of running, tonight... Tonight is the big night at Kennedy Park in El Cajon. We are going to be more like staggering around the bases. It's the big softball showdown between us here at the KGB and our arch rival, the Wieners, at Zoo 96 for Clear Channel World Domination bragging rights. And we can't lose this. No. Not to Zoo 96. I know. No. You're invited to come out and watch all of us, myself, Shelly, Chainsaw, Boyer, Bromo, Emily, Chucko, The Hoof. And there will be a special appearance by the famous San Diego Chicken. So, all you wacky Zoo 96 funsters are invited to come out to Kennedy Park tonight and watch the Dickster flatten Dave Rickards like a pancake. <laughs> all in good fun, of course. Right now, let's roll into another three-minute non-stop music jam on the home of Hot Hits, Zoo 96 FM, San Diego, with Dick and Diva Paper. Dickie, you talked right over that last jingle. I know. I think it sounds cooler that way. You know, more real. <laughs> well, listen, Bob, thanks for the interview yesterday. It meant a lot that you would visit us that long. It was cool. My pleasure as always. By the way, did everyone get my King of Doucheville reference? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Because that's one of your all-time best bits from what, 95? Yeah. Yeah, 95, you're right on as usual. Look, Bob, um, I have uh, kind of a delicate question. You can tell me to pound sand if you want, but you know, you've known Chainsaw longer than I have, and he has this weird fixation with the JK volume of the World Book Encyclopedia. Dave, I'm gonna stop you right there. I have no problem with the topic, but I simply cannot discuss this over the phone. Can you meet with me tomorrow before your show? Say it about, Oh, 0300? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess so. Where would you want to meet? 
Remember where Bromo's disaster date crapped her pants and he had to drive her all the way home? Yes, I do. There's a parking garage 100 yards west of that site. Secondly, do you recall the automobile you owned when you first drove out from Denver in 1990? Yeah, I sold it in 1993. You will find it in the parking garage, and I'll be there. Okay, hang on a second, Bob. We never mentioned on the air where Bromo's date crapped her pants, and how could you have possibly gotten my old car? Dave, this is bigger than you could possibly imagine. See you at Three Bells. Hey, sailor. Whoop. Check it out, huh? Why don't you drill a hole in it? <laughs> Whatever. Hey, Abramowitz, what do you got there, buddy? It's a life-size cutout of Diva from Zoo 96. Sweet. Didn't think that she was this flat, did you? <laughs> what do you got planned? Uh, a little dinner? Maybe introduce her to your pet fish or tour the station? What? No, I'm just screwing around. Yeah. Hey, I heard Dick and Diva have secret tapes from Ayatollah Khomeini. What? Yeah, Dick's all freaked out about it. God, even for him, that's weird. Hey, a chainsaw. Yeah. Um, does uh, Dick Shitnick have a hairpiece? What? What? Um, have fun golfing today, buddy, okay? Yeah. See you at the softball game today? Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. Hey, she looks a little bored. You might want to pick it up a little bit. All right. <laughs> a little bored. Yeah, the comedy doesn't stop at 10 o'clock. Hey, yeah. Hi, Chris. Hey. Go Padres. We got our tickets. I just saw your buddy Dick Zitnick yeah. heading on out of here with something that looked like it could have been an encyclopedia. Really? Yeah. You think he's the guy who stole your JK World Book? Could be. You know where he's headed? Yeah, he was going to the uh, baseball game. You mean tonight at El Cajon? No, Chainsaw. The baseball game, that one's played at Petco Park. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, see, the softball game, that's tonight in El Cajon. I'm surprised the you know the game. difference. This is amazing, but go ahead, please. The baseball game is going to feature a nine and a quarter inch Rawlings pre-Delaware mud applied baseball. Now, tonight, the softball game, we're going to be using a Worth ASA certified Blue Dot mid-compression .47 core 12-incher. That is fascinating. <laughs> Internet? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the information. You got it, buddy. Hey, Limburger, Chainsaw here. Um, about today's Padre game, did you give Dick and Diva the company box seats or the nosebleed tickets? Nosebleeds, cool, cool. Yeah. Oh, and Limburger, I don't think you have to ax Dave about that JK encyclopedia no mo. Yeah. I think your boy Chainsaw has done tracked that baby down. Mark Grant, what are you guys doing here? You're supposed to be on Channel 4. $500 million ballpark. They forget to build us a broadcast booth. So we call the games off these monitors. Wow. That is, uh, that's wild stuff. Hey, Cookie, you know your traffic reporter, Ruth 66? She's got a great voice. I love her. What does she look like? Ugh, chainsaw. She works in a separate building. We've never even seen her. Hey, Chainsaw, how about sitting in with us for a few innings? Come on. Yeah, you could even call a few pitches. Come on. Oh, no, thanks. I got to catch up to a guy who has one of my encyclopedias. You're kidding, right? I don't joke about that, Mark. Santa Maria, what a whack job. 
Well, if you need us, you'll know where to find us. And back for the bottom half of the fifth inning. Phil Nevin leading off for San Diego. First pitch is swung on and belted to deep left center field. Go. That one's got a chance. Go. That one is gone. Home run. Two nothing, Padre. <laughs> Dick and Diva, it's a party now, huh? Hey, Teen Top. How you doing? What you got there? Photo album. Photo album. Effing Boyer. What's that? Nothing. Look at Dickie's new Shih Tzu. Hey! The one on the left has your hair color there, Dickie. In vitro? Ha, ha, ha. Hey, uh, Goody had to send Bob Costa down the hall yesterday. I thought we were supposed to share guests. That was the idea when we all moved in under one roof. Remember, Cookie? Well, you could have taped the interview and dubbed in your voices like you do with our other bits. Yeah. But don't flatter yourself, Chainsaw. Uh, but since you didn't give us Bob Costa, uh, we're going to keep the Ayatollah Khomeini tapes to ourselves. Ooh, because he's the funniest of the Ayatollahs. Yeah. Hang on, my cell phone's vibrating. Hello? Hey, Jill. What's up? That's great news. Excellent. We got Richard Simmons to ourselves tomorrow morning on the show. Great. You have an incoming call. OK, Jill. Thanks. <laughs> Must be in a bad cell or something. Thought it was on vibrate there, Chainsaw. Yeah. I'm going to get some sodas. You guys want anything? No, thanks, Chainsaw. Uh, don't slip on that second banana on your way down there, Cookie. <laughs> High five. So are we going to have a golf bet today, Brolo? Can't we play one time without a golf bet? No. I'll tell you why. What fun would it be? Besides, you win half these bets. Yeah, right. Like the time I lost and you guys filled my underwear with Alka-Seltzer pills and then shot water at me. That was fun. That was fun. Captain Fizzy Pants. Yeah. Oh, God, that was a glorious day. Fun day. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Does it hurt? Is it hurting? Oh my god, this is so... <laughs> I want to stop, but I can't! Does it hurt? <laughs> oh I bet god. your Bob Lones didn't have any indigestion that day, huh? Yeah, ha ha. How about that time I had to get that swirly, and you rigged the stupid toilet so the water shot down my back? Hey. That was a brilliant piece of engineering. If I do say so myself. <laughs> Knees down, hands on the rim. What's squirting me? What is that? <laughs> it's running down my underwear. <laughs> You know what, man? You're like Captain Evil when it comes to these golf bets. Promo, I could have lost. Yeah, right. Like you wearing a thong? Yeah, sure, that'll happen. Yeah, well, remind me of something. Whose idea was it to have you popping out of a birthday cake? That was your birthday surprise, dude. It wasn't my fault they rolled me up on an incline. OK. Here's your birthday present, Dave Rickards. A little something that we designed just for you. Take it away. It's a birthday cake. The top is now coming off. Who did you put in Two black gloved hands are emerging. We really hope you like this. Well, I hope it's like Barbara Eaton <laughs> or something. Well, this is your birthday present. Ah! <laughs> oh, no. And it's a Bravowitz oh, no. in a thong with black ah! prints on it, flesh colored, and he has a little song for you. Oh, <laughs> this, was, this was the best and the worst day of my life. <laughs> OK, Bravowitz, hit it. Happy oh. birthday ah. to you. Jeez. Oh. Oh. I'll never win another game of golf in my life. Happy, That's happy, what he's happy, happy oh. birthday 
to you. Shake it, honey. Oh. Dave, what do you got inside that thong? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> The cake fell over. <laughs> fell out of the cake. He fell out of the cake. <laughs> the cake tipped over. Stupid rollers. And let's see, who was it that sat with you and held your hand in the hospital on his 40th birthday? Oh, that's right. That was me. Yeah, you did. Sorry. I mean, thanks. Stupid concussion. Good times. Good times. All right. What's the deal? Are we gonna bet or not? Fine, just so that I don't have to freaking streak like I did last time. Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> and there he goes! <laughs> all right, all right, no streaking. I have an idea. You know those commercials that Shelly's been doing for the window factory? Yeah. Okay, here's the bet. Loser, tomorrow night at her dinner party, has to throw an actual bowling ball at her tempered glass door. Okay, what's the bet? The bet is that your tee shot will not make the fairway. That's it? That's it. Down the fairway. On the fairway. <laughs> no freaking problem. Mr. Titleist, you're going for a ride. On top of those houses down the left. Dang it! Huh, what do you know? Good play out there. Hey. Well, what you doing? <laughs> hey, looks like you've got an admirer. I think I'm okay with that. The waiting is over, folks. Diva leads off for Zoo 96. Umpire Clint August looks over the batter's box. Shelly Dunn behind the plate. Dave Rickards on the hill. And Diva's okay looking, I guess. Rickards' first offering, swung on, belt it high and deep to left. Chris Boyer checking his investments as Diva rounds first. He's completely oblivious, folks. Boyer chucks it down and brings it home. But too late, Zoo 96 goes up 1-0. Put away your shotgun, folks. That dog cannot hunt. But at least Clear Channel stock went up 12 cents today. Don't spend it all in one place, Chris.
So we're set to go here in the fifth. There'll be a change behind the plate due to the rib injury to Dave Mason. It'll be Mark Sanchez. Sanchez has a nice squat to him. Umpire Clint August squats down way low, placing his right hand on Sanchez's right shoulder, jamming his right shin between the two cheeks of Mark Supple behind. Dave Rickards, the batter, waits the first offering. Fastball just misses outside, ball one. Pitcher Jen Sheik falls behind as the two big men behind the plate doing a kind of dance for us tonight. Flittering and frolicking like two beautiful butterflies on a summer afternoon. Here's the 1 0, swing and a miss, ball gets away, separating the two big men momentarily. And look at that, folks. Rickards bends over to tie his shoelace, the fabric gripping his chiseled twin biscuits. And that's why they call it the show. The 1 1 now, outside, ball two. That gives umpire Clint the tool August a chance to dust off the plate. The most fastidious umpire in the game. When he and Sanchez were shacking up together, it was Clint the tool August who played Felix to Mark's Oscar. Jen looking in now. The only sign she's getting is that there's fire still burning between these two big men. Here's a 2-1 to Rickers. Swung on, built it down the left field line, and that's trouble, folks. Rickard scampered around the base path like a trembling mare in heat being chased down by Seattle Slough. His throw has no chance. Rickards delivered safe at home, much like a newborn baby in swaddling clothes. Warm and cozy, folks. Suckling, bobbing, and groping for that life-giving nectar. Rickards now tipping his cap and exposing that perfectly sculpted backside to the right field pavilion. Too far away to spank, but a boy can dream. Man, oh, man. Now, what's this, folks? Either the KGB van is a late-inning base running replacement, or this entire ballpark is about to become foul territory. Chicken, that is. Zacky Farms. Tucky Fry. Hit me fucking dick! <laughs> Top of the ninth, KGB leading 9-5. Zoo 96 down to its final out. Base is loaded for Dick Shitnick, who's now pointing his sausage-like probing digit towards Dave Rickards. And I'm no lip reader, folks, but it appears Rickards just invited Shitnick to get their pet cats together for a play date. Shitnick now dangling his dangly, Babe Ruth style. Base is loaded, two out. This one's going downtown. Rickards kicks and fires, popped up to the left side. Abramowitz might have a play on it. But a fan interferes and swats it away. That was the ball game, folks. Would have been out number three. Let's see if we can get a closer look at it. I think it's the fella in the Cubs cap, headphones, and Renegade's baseball sweatshirt. <laughs> Take a good gander, folks. Could be looking into the eyes of the next great American jinx. Man, oh man. If KGB loses his ball game, they might just run him out of town like a common pygmy. New life now for Shitnick and his teammates, and the fans are getting into it. Chance of dick, dick, dick echoing into the night. 
two outs, bases loaded. Z96 trailing KGB by four. Here's the 0-1 to Shitnick. Runners going, swung on, built it. A towering drive deep to right field. Chainsaw could not see it coming. Off his noggin. Don't worry, folks, it's mostly bone. Chainsaw retrieves and air mails it. Off the backstop, three runs have scored. Shitnick rounding third, and off comes the carpet. Everybody scores, this game is tied. Hold on, wait a second, folks. It's roadkill on the third base line. Is it alive? Should we feed it or kill it? I have no idea, but I'll tell you what, I'm tagging Benji out. Batter's out! Game over! KTB win! The shag is tagged! This ball game is over, and we've got an exploding shitnik! Umpire Clint August holding his ground, Diva trying to cool things off, and now the chicken's into the fricassee. Pulsating with excitement one moment and flaccid the next. A roller coaster of emotions here at Kennedy Park. And look at that! The dick is doused. And we've got a chicken chase, folks. Dick at full throttle. You get the feeling he'd like to chuck that chicken if he gets the chance. The chicken turns. Dick bull rushes like Don Zimmer. And Pedro Martinez says hello. The chicken now administering the Moises Alu treatment. And if what they say is true, the Dickster should have a thicker skin next time around. What a night at the old ball yard, huh, folks? Still runs like a dream. I got rid of this heap like 10 years ago. One cannot escape oneself. Pardon me? Franz Kafka. You are just full of surprises tonight. Ah, yes. The portals of discovery. What's that, more Kafka? James Joyce that time. Well, I'll tell you, your lesson in philosophy is riveting, really. But I... I hate that song. What's the big secret about Chainsaw's encyclopedia? Forget about Chainsaw's world book. It goes much deeper than that. Yeah, deep enough to get me into a parking garage at 3 o'clock in the morning. Dave, I like you. You're a Chicago guy. You've been around. Look, for the last 18 years, I've been gallivanting around the globe, sitting next to fake fireplaces, telling the English-speaking world about shot putters and ski jumpers and synchronized swimmers. Do you really think 
that's all I've been there for. Well, you're the network's top anchor. I mean, only a naive person wouldn't know that. You're missing the point. Dave, I've been with the company for longer than I can say. The company? When the U.S. women won the World Cup back in 99, do you think Brandy Chastain pulling off her shirt was spontaneous? I don't know, Bob. It worked for me. Or Carl Lewis and his nine gold medals? Look, Lewis couldn't outrun one of those Jeeps your friend Chris Boyer has stranded in his backyard. You ever wonder about that, Dave? Now who's being naive? You pull all those strings? What does it have to do with us? Your pal Dick is no disc jockey. The radio gig is his cover. Dick is actually an Eastern Bloc agent, born Dmitry Shitnik. We've been tracking him since 79. And his paramour, Diva Shkwansky, born and raised in Chernobyl, Dave. Chernobyl? But she's perfect. Reverse mutation. Her parents were mongrels. No matter. Dick and Diva are part of a major, major conspiracy. I can't discuss it right now. We're on the verge of terminating their operation. So is that why he's had all these, like, weird guests on lately? Now you're getting it. Remember when Yakov Smirnov was on their show last January? I was in town that week to monitor the interview. It was laced with cryptic messages. Dude, are you saying that your appearance with us that week was just like a cover? Because you've known Chainsaw since he was in Phoenix, right? Chainsaw? I'd been faking admiration for his bits since he washed out in Frisco back in 84. It's just coincidence that Dick has been in every market Chainsaw's been in Phoenix, too. Chainsaw's been my excuse to stay close. <sighs> So, how do I fit in the mix? Forget about Chainsaw's book. The key is Dick. Make him think you don't care that he steals your bits. It's like the man said. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. More Kafka? Are you kidding? Corleone. Hello? Right, okay. Um, anything else? No, we'll handle the rest. Trust me. I've been at this game since the Bay of Pigs. Okay, wait a second, Bob. I know a little bit of history. Now, the Bay of Pigs was 1961, so you were what? Ten years old? Nine. I was precocious. Hey, Romo. Hey, Dave. Hey. Yeah. You know Dom Herrera's in the building? Really? Yeah, he's at Zoo 96 with Dick and Diva. Hmm. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Dom. Hey. I heard you're in the building. You got, like, a show in town or something? Yeah, Saturday night at the comedy store. Why don't you come on in? We'll plug the show. You're kidding, right? Why would you say that? Dick said you wanted no part of me, so I did their show. I killed. Now I gotta go all the way down to the place with the other guy. He's picking me up, driving me to the other thing, and whatnot, we're meeting the people over there. You know what? Dick is the real-life king of Doucheville. Dom, that is a total lie. Did he con me? Yeah, I think so. I thought I smelled a rat bastard, laughing at all the wrong places, calling me Don, Tom, Anthony, giving me this cheap hat. That's not a good color for me. Look at my eyes. That's our Dickie. Man, I'm gonna ice that Jadrol. I'm gonna stick his Paulinis in a vice until his eyes pop out like casino chips. I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> All 
We're gonna plug the show anyway. Don't worry about it. Hey, you wanna come to the show? I'll get you, I'll get you two first. You know, you uh, buy a ticket, I'll get you one free. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. I could use some laughs. Okay, well, you'll get them with me, my friend. I know, because you kill. I kill. Hey, Dave, why don't you come backstage after the show? I got some news about your boy, Dickie. You won't have to bother with him too much longer. Okay, man. Talk See to you, you. Hey, you're gonna come to the house for me tonight, aren't you? Oh yeah, I wouldn't miss it, Chef. Oh cool, I have this 1997 Chateau Montalena Cabernet Sauvignon. I think you'll really love it. Cool, I can't wait. Of course, Chainsaw and Boyer can't make it because it's Kooky Kennedy Club night tonight. Pre-existing commitment, Shell. Yeah, we're gonna solve the case tonight. When I hold up this piece of paper, they can't hear me? Conspiracy geeks? All right, here we go. <laughs> 101 KGB, it's Dave, Shelley, and Chainsaw. 570-1015 is our number. Blind Stan, you're next. Thanks for holding. What up, dog? Hey, I have a joke for the joke czar. Are you ready? Yes, here's how it works. If we don't know the punchline to your joke, I will hook you up with tickets to see Dom Herrera at the Comedy Store tomorrow night in La Jolla. Go ahead. Okay, here goes. How did Helen Keller burn her ears? Oh, no. Well, do you know it? Yeah, but uh, go ahead. She answered the iron. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. How did she burn the other ear? I give up, Stan. They called back! I can't believe you didn't know that one. Yeah. Uh, Stan, thanks. Hold on for your tickets. With traffic, here is Route 66. Thank you so much. For me, it seems pretty typical so far this morning. Not too bad. South on 5. North County coastline bunching up uh, right around Solana Beach. Southbound 15 slows in Escondido. North 805 slowing out of the South Bay from the 54. I'm Ruth 66 with Dave, Shelley, and Chainsaw on the 101.5 KGB. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, I just finished my gig is Ruth 66. Now I've got to go and do some voiceovers for the network. Um, so I'll get back to you in a little bit, okay? All right, bye. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Dave. Dave-o, what's happening? Oh, hey, Limburger. Yeah, um, my... Uh, Glickenhaus would like to see you, okay? Right now? Yeah. Um, if you could just go forth and... Okay, look, it's go ahead, not go forth. And it's great. Not super. I mean, if you're gonna quote the classics, have the common decency to get it right. Yeah, not sure I follow you there, but appreciate it. It's Banks! Hey, Mike. What's up, man? How you doing? Good. Where are you going? Uh, basketball. Every Friday. Chief wants to see you. The Chief? That's right. Right now? Right now. Last door on your left. Uh, I didn't even know the Chief. Right now? Knew who I was. <laughs> Last door on your left. I don't even know who the Chief actually is. Right now. Last door on the... Last door, left. Come in. Hello, Chainsaw. Please, sit down. Dr. Laura Schlesinger. I had no idea that you were the chief. I prefer to be thought of as my kid's mom. Now, Chainsaw, it has come to my attention that you believe that your partner, Dave Rickards, has stolen the JK volume of your World Book Encyclopedia? Ah, oh, gee, Dr. Laura, if you could make him give it back, that would be swell. You know, Cookie, I know quite a bit about this subject as I did my postgraduate thesis on this phenomenon. You know, about people who lose their personal property and then fantasize that their closest friends or family have stolen it. It's called the JK Cook Syndrome. You might want to look it up when you get home. Uh, you're excused now, Cookie, and oh, good luck with your basketball. <sighs> that poor dear boy, he certainly has issues. Hey, Tiger. Hey, Diva. Sounding very impressive on the air this morning. Well, thank you. 
I'd like to take a lesson sometime. Like a private lesson? Of course. Mm. Well, that could be arranged. Mm. Hey, Becky. Hi, Dave. Mike wanted to see me? Yeah, go on in. He's with Dick Shitnick. Come in, Dave. Have a seat. Hey, what's up? Dickie is concerned you think he's stealing your bits. Improving them is more like it. How's that? Like Lash Wednesday. Mine is Gash Wednesday. Much classier. Really? Well, how about Stump the Joke Czar? Well, that's a total ripoff. Oh, on contraire, comrade. Ours is Stump the Joke Czar. T-S-A-R, not C-Z-A-R. Way more authentic. I haven't got much to say here, Mike. We have time. Okay, I'm pretty much in the dark here. Perhaps Dickie can shed some light on the subject. Okay. How about the fact that I joined the company way before Dave? I should have had first dibs on the KGB job. I've always taken care of you, Dickie. Taken care of me? I had seniority, Mike. You ever think about that, huh? You ever once think about that? Let Dickie do overnights at K-pop. Let Dickie MC a men's bikini contest at some Mickey Mouse nightclub. Uh, send Dickie to pick somebody up at the airport. I had seniority, and I was stepped over. That's the way Clear Channel wanted it. It ain't the way I wanted it. I can create things. I'm original. Not like everybody says, like a copycat. I'm original, and I want respect. I gotta go. It's not personal, just business, right, Mike? Hey, Doug, is that a JK encyclopedia in your bag? Yeah, my daughter's doing a report on Japan, so I borrowed it for the facts and the maps and stuff. Why do you ask? Oh, nothing. I, I just like encyclopedias. Um, have you ever met my partner, Dave Rickards? No, you never met him. Game time. Let's go. Cookie, Doug, you guys ready? for one high and tight on Miss Diva. And what does Dave do? Oh, he just grooves it in. And that bimbo tattoos a solo tater. I mean, geez, Zoo 96 was one up before I ever even got my chew moist. I mean, it's not as if I don't know what they're doing, you know. Dave and Diva sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I -S -S and bleh. So we're up nine to five. It's the ninth inning, two outs. All the ducks are on the pond. Shit, Nick, it's a routine flight. Ball game, right? Of course. Wrong. Chainsaw's out there daydreaming about his lost encyclopedia. The ball actually hits him on the head. And then the moron picks it up, air mails it at the backstop, completely ignoring the cutoff man. He completely <sighs> ignores the cutoff man? Yep, so pass out the rye bread and mustard, Grandma. It's grand salami time for Dick Shitnick. Oh, thanks. You know, and the thing is, I had home play completely blocked. I could have had Dick on his ass. But no, the KGB Keystone cops need a bad rug and a bad umpire to bail him out again. Oh, and now that high-maintenance man-eater is crashing my party tonight. Diva's coming to your soiree tonight? And I could teach her a thing or two about being a lady. <laughs>
Oh, I did drink. Scotty. Yeah. Tell us more about your stellar television appearance on Harry Prince Live. Well, they told me to be pissy. Yeah. So, was I pissy enough? Yeah, you didn't seem to face Glickenhaus. No, you should have thrown feces at him like animals at the zoo. <laughs> Hitting Glickenhaus back <laughs> into the lab! <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of which, you guys actually recreated the Zabruder film? Of course we did. Who doesn't? Normal people. What was your reason? To better understand the change of command, my friend. Change of command. It's all right there. Now we have the books, we have the original newspaper accounts, we have the Life magazines, even some creative writing, fiction, like the Warren Report. All good things to have. The only thing missing is the JK Encyclopedia that Dave stole. Stole? What are you talking about? Whatever, you, you tell him. Look, Dave had this telephone interview scheduled with Marley Matlin, you know, the actress. So he's got the JK World Book out. He's boning up on Helen Keller. <laughs> like it helped. <laughs> yeah, listen to you young broadcasters out there. Avoid phoners with deaf people. Yeah. So Chainsaw thinks that Dave lost the JK Stole World Book. Stole my JK Encyclopedia. Why don't you just order a duplicate? Two reasons. One. You call the 1-800 number and you're on hold for so long, your elbow fuse is shut. And B, it would be from a newer edition, so it wouldn't match the set. Look, aside from the fact that a new volume would be more current OCD boy, what's keeping you from going online and getting the information on the internet? Can't trust the internet. Sure you can. Uh, the poodle in the microwave? Hello? Or the guy in Vegas who woke up in a bed of ice missing his kidneys? Those are urban legends. Cookie. The entire World Book Encyclopedia is on the internet. Yeah, right. I'm serious. My daughters used it all through high school. Really? Really? Tree, this guy's like hopeless, okay? You. Let's just watch the video. Okay, who's who in your little reenactment? Okay, I'm driving. <laughs> okay. Our friend Blair is Jackie. Got it. And none other than Boyer Ooh. is John Kennedy. And Chainsaw shot the entire thing from the very pedestal used by Dallas dressmaker Abraham <laughs> Zapruder when he shot the original 8mm film. I'm Casey Casey. <laughs> I'm Casey Casey. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, is a, that is a true story. Uh, let's go to videotape, oh, shall we? Let's, 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 let's roll tape. There's the book suppository. Where's the limo? It's the maroon convertible. That's a Mustang. That's still a Ford Motor Company vehicle. What's with the whistle? To synchronize the gunshots. Blair didn't crawl out far enough. There's the triple underpass. Look at that. Look at that. If Zapruder had kept panning right, we would have seen the shooter behind that fence. Maybe he did pan right, and that part of the film was confiscated by the FBI. Whoa. Whoa. You guys are crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's the general <laughs> consensus. You're right, Tree, we are crazy. But if the shots did come from behind that fence, Zapruder almost had to have heard something or seen someone. After all, he was standing on that pedestal, which, as you can see, has a clear view of the entire area. Maybe he panicked and ducked away before he had a chance to look around. Or maybe the conspirators paid him off. So let's cut to the chase. Who do you think was behind the conspiracy? Maybe it was just the curse of the little bambino. The curse of the little bambino? Yes, Trey. My witnesses claim there was a little kid standing up there on the grassy knoll. Can, maybe 12 years old. Yeah. Wearing a nah, nothing new. Just typical rehash. I'll let you know if I hear anything interesting. Yeah. The infamous Wall of Shemps. Pictures of Shelley's ex-boyfriends. Shemps? Shemp. 
the most underrated of all the Three Stooges. Long ago, Dave Rickards named one of Shelly's ex-boyfriends after the great Stooge, Shemp, and it stuck. Since then, she's dated a series of Shemps, one through five. Never a Mo or a Curly. Always a Shemp. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you boys forgetting somebody? Larry Fine. Hello. He's the most underrated stooge. How can you forget about Larry Fine and call yourselves men? Why, you I oughta. This 1997 Chateau Montalene Cabernet Sauvignon. Nah, thanks. Maybe later. Oh. Hey, is uh, Dave around? Yeah, I. Uh, well, I think he went back to the carriage house. Why? I'm supposed to pay up a stupid golf bet. I gotta throw this bowling ball through your front door. <laughs> There's no way you're gonna throw a bowling ball through my front door. Well, Shelly, all your ads say that your front door is like shatterproof. Well, yeah, but when did I become a part of your little stupid golf bets? Oh, sorry, Shell. Where's Dave? Oh, promo. Jeez, oh, promo. Hey, Tiger. I'm ready for that private lesson. Really? Why don't I check my schedule? Huh, I just had a cancellation. Okay, I'm all yours. Have you ever thought hey, about... Hey, guys. You busy? Yes. No. Hey, I got the bowling ball for the golf bet payoff. What better way to cap off a party than with a bowling ball? Not exactly the ball I had in mind. <laughs> Unfortunately, Abramus lost his golf bet yesterday. Aww. And we had a very special bet, and that was the loser would take that actual bowling ball and throw it against Shelly's actual glass door to see if it'll stand up to the test that you're always talking about on the radio. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not real happy with this. Yeah. Come on. Good God, guys. You know what? Have a little faith in your client, woman. Well, yeah, here but I don't want it. So nothing blew up or anything? No, you know what? It was just a tiki lamp, and I don't even think Shelly even cared. It was a nice shot, though, you got to admit. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Dom Herrera, I've been looking forward to this all day today. I'm going to go talk to Dom for a second. Can you chill for a minute? Sure, take your time. Be right back. Dom, can Yo. I come in? Yo, Dave, yeah, hey. come on in. Hey, uh, no bad blood about yesterday, huh? You know what? Dickie, he just likes to cause trouble. Don't worry about it. That's what I wanted to tell you. Dick and Diva, they're leaving town. Yeah, they got a gig in Philly. They told you that? Yeah, yeah, they left the intercom on. I ever heard Dickie bragging he'd stolen enough bits from you to, to move on. Only Dickie said he'd do them much better than you. <laughs> you believe us? So, they actually are radio people. Huh? Nothing, nothing. Hey, um... By any chance, do you know Bob Costas? Bobby to see? Bob Costas is the greatest practical joker in show business. He once had Conan O'Brien convinced he was in the CIA. Is that right? He even tracked down one of Max Weinberg's old cars to make it look convincing. That was rich. This guy is a character. Fished him in like a big tuna. They're still telling that one at 30 Rock. Colonel O'Brien has been trying to get him back for years. Forget about it. Bobby won't bite. He's the master. All hail the king. All hail Costas. He is a male model. You are a human sloth. Do you understand me? <laughs> Want to look like him? How about if I start by trimming some of your fat face, you porkadelic? You centerfold for Meat Magazine. You heaving, humping hog of life. I don't mean that in a bad way. Imagine a fourth grade school teacher being honest how brutal this would be. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, Johnny, your son, your only child, the fruit of your loin, is a moron. <laughs> I have no idea how this kid finds a door to get out of the house in the morning 
If I were you, I would waste him and start over. <laughs> Dick Shitnick wrote that line for me, ladies and gentlemen. I love that guy. <laughs> He's the best. Yes. Hey, Dave. Hey, what's up, Chris? Hey, what, uh, what happened to Shelly today? Uh, she called in sick. Two days in a row? Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Shane. Hey. Hey. Special delivery from me to you. You found it. No, no, I didn't. I went on eBay and I ordered a duplicate copy. I'm so sick of this thing, I just want it behind us. And it's from the same edition, and it's not from my set because it doesn't have my identification mark. Thanks a lot, man. That means a lot. What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm glad you like it. You know what? I, I, I've been getting kind of nutty about this. My bad. I got carried away with this whole thing. It's just these books have meant so much to me since I was like a little kid. Don't sweat it. I would say actually you and I were a couple patsies in a pretty big setup. Cool. Patsies, huh? <laughs> that sounds familiar. Hey, guys. Hey, Jill. Hey, so I've got Henry Kissinger phoning in tomorrow. Do you guys need a bio on him or anything? I'll get one off the internet. <laughs> OK, that's K-I-S-S-I-N-G-E-R, right? Yeah. Power is the ultimate aphrodisiac. Good book? Yeah, a real page turner. Perfect for the beach. Do you think they'll ever find out? Nah, they're numbskulls. Sweetie, more 97 Chateau Montalena? Sure, but isn't it about time you started calling me Shemp? dream of working with the three great directors of our time, Coppola, Scorsese, and David Schwimmer. Oh, and Polanski. All right, Bobby, very good, very good, Bob. All right, now, light the cigar, ignite the vimitas. Not good. <laughs> cut. He said, cut, Scott. <laughs> oh, plus Spielberg and Lucas. What was I thinking? This is fun. I wish we could do the same scene all day. What? I know. <laughs> Chris. No. Oh, oh. That's right. David Bowie. Would you stick to the script, please? <laughs> Coppola, Scorsese, Polanski, Spielberg, Lucas, and David Schwimmer. I did their show. I killed. And now I gotta go down to the other thing with the guy that driving me over to the place, and I gotta see the kid and the thing about the boy. <laughs> Flick it, Bob. Flick the lighter. Flick it with vim and vigor. Franz Kafka. Plus, Ron Howard and James Cameron. And Mel Brooks. Mel, Mel Brooks. Yeah, Mel Brooks, too. I thought I did that beautifully, but if you want to do it again, I'll do it again. That poor, dear boy. He certainly has issues. We're good. We're done. That's it. Now get out. I have to change. <laughs> hey, guys. So I've got Henry Kissinger phoning oh, in tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Battle of the sexes. It's two women. <laughs> Didn't even get it. <laughs> no, was it funny? I mean, am I supposed to be, like, laughing? Coppola, Scorsese, Polanski, Spielberg, Lucas, Howard, James Cameron, Mel Brooks, Penny Marshall, and David Schwimmer. And probably some others, too. Thanks to the KGB. The guys are here tonight. Chainsaw and Dave are in the back. Is there a cut somewhere? <laughs> Sadly, none of those directors have called recently, so I accepted a part in Chainsaw's movie. And I got to tell you, he was brilliant. He coaxed from me what I believe is my finest work. Ah, yes. I can't do it. What in heaven's name are you doing there? Flick it! <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Becky. Hi, Dave. Mike wanted to see me? Yeah, go right in. He's with Dick Chisnick. Who? Mike wanted to see me? Yeah, go right in. He's with Dick Chisnick. Chisnick. Mike wanted to see me? Yeah, go right in. He's with Dick Chisnick. Ch <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dick Chisnick. Okay. Hey, Becky. Hi, Dave. Mike wanted to see me? Yeah, go on in. He's with Dick Chisnick. Who? Dick Chisnick. <laughs> <laughs>to work with a star of Dave Rickard's magnitude. Yeah, you know, it's a dream. He's such a generous performer, and that brings out the best in everyone surrounding him. I mean, the guy's an artist. He's a true artist. And I want respect! <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna help me. I, it might take me one or two to get over it. <laughs> We'll be back in two and two. No flipping. We're clear. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mark. Thank you, boys. Sitting O. And Miss Shelley Dunn. Va va voom. I think he went back to the carriage house. Why? Oh, I lost a stupid bet. I gotta throw this golf ball through your front door. <laughs> There's no way you're gonna throw a, a bowling, bowling ball. ball. <laughs> a <golf> ball. <laughs> Let's try that again. I lost a golf ball. Okay. Woo! Okay, please. Action. Oh, hey, guys. Roll ball. Oh, sorry. Am I interrupted? Action. Oh, hey, guys. Roll ball. Oh, sorry. Am I interrupted? Yes. <laughs> Action. Oh, hey, guys. Roll ball. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Am I interrupted? Don't look at them. Look at the face. Jeez. I've had like 50, 50 martinis. Oh. Am I interrupting anything? Am I interrupting anything? <clears throat> Am I interrupting anything? I'm sorry. I've had a couple martinis. Why? <laughs> sorry. Okay. Action. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Action. Oh, hey, guys. Romo! Oh, sorry. Am I right? Oh. I don't like that word. Interrupting. It is. After you've had like three martinis. Ooh. Can you change you guys, the word around? Are you guys busy? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Sorry. Are you guys busy? Gotcha. Okay. Action. Oh, hey, guys. Promo. Oh. oh, sorry. You guys busy? Cut. My only real regret is that I didn't have any scenes with Abramowitz. Gosh, darn it, Boyer! And then All right. Have a sleek sheet and, like that and we have one container of cottage cheese left, and I think in the, in the, in the grand spirit in the of yeah. athletics that we should let yeah. one of San Diego State's all-time greatest, Marshall Falk, right. deposit. The last cottage cheese. Oh man. Marshall Falk is on stage with us. Sorry, Marshall, sorry, sorry. Ah, ah, it was a privilege, it was an honor, thank you. Ah. He's an American hero, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give it up for our Bromwitz. Maybe next time. <laughs> Yeah, that was the line. <laughs> this is my garage in Encinitas where we did the Kooky Kennedy Club meeting and the Bob Costas parking garage scene. That's right. We only had an hour with Bob when he was in town, so we brought the location to him. It was a rainy night in February. Yeah, memories. Then later, we filmed Dave out at San Diego State. They were never together. Six weeks and 30 miles apart. Isn't that interesting? All right, let's try it again. This is the good one. Lights, camera, roll, speed, and... Action! I'm actually enjoying this cigar. The JK Conspiracy. Good times. Good times.
That's a print. There's no retakes. Beautiful. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Great to see you again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Happy birthday, Jim. Happy birthday, Donna. Good night. Thanks, KGB, for coming in. See you guys. Didn't cuss, that's for hacking my dog Cause I placed a fella on top of the river And set the stock still, fuck the kiss of an hour I went round to bite my time and wait for it to And let them receive like some prison demon Return it to an underground land Somewhere in the sun like lands Let it get you to battle I'll try to squeeze my way through an opening With the drinking and scribings of my feet I am a tailless amphibian again I'm telling you, this is a lovely brochure of uh, shower stalls and windows and things that they make. I mean, this is, I, I can tell this is quality, high-class, expensive stuff. Oh, that, I've been looking at windows myself for my house. You may want to call these folks and see if they do any work out here on the West Coast. They're on the East Coast, and their name is Douche Queen. <laughs> <laughs> That's Douche beautiful. Queen. <laughs> Douche Queen. Yeah. Where do you suppose Douche Queen would be? Uh, Flushing, Flushing, New York? Yeah. <laughs> Better yet, it's Whack Off, New Jersey. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, no. Yeah. You think I'm making it up? I'm not making it up. Good morning, Douche Queen. This is Sir Winston St. Clair. I am the king <laughs> of Doucheville. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for the queen. The queen just left. She went out to lunch. She went out to lunch. I want to speak with my lady. I want to speak with my lady. My lady, Douche Queen. <laughs> you want to speak to the next queen? Yes, I do. Okay, I'll let you talk to her. Hold on. The lady in waiting, as it were. Uh, okay. Indeed. My kingdom Thank awaits. <laughs> My kingdom awaits. In Douche Queen. <laughs> Hello. 
Hello, this is Sir Winston St. Clair, and I am the douche king. <laughs> I wish to speak with the douche queen, if I so may. Speaking? Well, hello, my dear. Hello. You've uh, gone afar from the castle this morning. Yes, I've been wandering. Where are you now? In Wackoff, New Jersey? Yes. Hmm. What in heaven's name are you doing there? <laughs> I would seem that they would be mutually incompatible. Let me ask you a question. Hmm. Where are you calling from? Douche. I am calling from a doucheville. I am Sir Winston St. Clair, <laughs> the douche king calling for the douche queen. Now, is, is, that, is that in Europe or the United States? I don't even know. <laughs> we are our own domain. You're on really? the other kingdom. Are you on the internet? Do you have an AOL.com address? I am the king of douche men. <laughs> That's all I need to say. Tell her not to mock you. Do not mock me, my dear. Have you Do you get out often? <laughs> I will douched. have you be douched. <laughs> okay, well, it was, it was nice talking to you. Sandy Eagles 101 KGB